Coming up, Tim goes on the hunt for a deadly predator. We're going to put this noose over his nose and bring him out. Des helps a big baby adjust to life without his mum. It's all right, mate. Come on. And Nikki visits a special nursery. But you can't help but get attached to them. Meet the world's biggest mummy's boy. For the first time in his life, Two-and-a-half-year-old Tawali has been separated from his mum, Lataba, at this open-range zoo. Mum's not that happy about it either. Today, rhino keeper Debbie has the tough task of separating the pair forever. So for the first time, Tawali won't have any visuals of his mum. Over the last few days, he's still been able to see Lataba through the fence. But after today, they will have no more contact. How hard is it to separate uh, a, a one-ton baby from its mum? It's pretty hard because, as you can imagine, um, mum and baby are, are pretty attached. At four and a half years old, his brother Janini is more used to the separation and will hopefully comfort Tuwali. Hopefully being the operative word, because Janini is a bit of a bully on the savannah, hence the sawn-off horn. Anyway, the key to today's painful adolescent process is food, food and more food. Come on! Good boy! Come on! They're pretty quick too, aren't they? Like, if they run, they... They can run up to 60k, so they can definitely get a good run up if they want to, yeah. He knows something's up. Tawali's just thinking, ooh, food! Good boy! Yeah, he does think oh. with his stomach a lot. <laughs> In the neighbouring paddock are the other white rhinos. The dominant male, Katamba, moseys up to the fence to make sure the new boys know who's boss around here. The keepers have brought the youngsters down here so they can watch Katambo do what he does and learn from his mature behaviour. Tawali seems happy enough enjoying his hay but eventually realises that for the first time in his life, he can't see Mum. It's OK. It's OK. That's a rhino, for I want my mother. The heartbroken little rhino gets more and more agitated. Now seriously missing his mum, the poor chap is starting to get pretty distressed. The big fear is that he may run through one of the enclosure's electrified fences. Even though they've electrified, when an animal's pretty distressed, they don't really think about that. Charlie, calm down. Big brother Janini isn't providing much comfort. Hey, it's all right. Mum's also heartbroken. Leave it. Keep talking, Deb. Good girl. Leave it alone. Eventually, Tawali calms down. And it will take a little while, but he will get over missing his mum. And Lataba, with her newfound freedom, will hopefully be able to fall pregnant again. And the circle of life will go on at the Open Range Zoo. Hey, good boy. Say hello to Stuart Douglas. He's the creator of a zoo dedicated entirely to venomous creatures. James's tour of the Venom Zoo bypasses some of the more usual suspects and kicks off with a scorpion. Are they pincers? Yeah, they're actually pedipalps or pincers, and uh, here's the talson. And to say that sharp is a bit of an underestimation. It's actually quite capable of going through my thumb now. Yeah? Yeah. So you want to hold it? Um, I'm, I don't think so. Trust okay. me. Okay, no, it might pinch you. It knows that I'm going to play with it, feed it, but most of all it knows that I'm actually going to put it back. Enough of the scorpion. Let's move on to the centipede. Can we pick him up? No, no. 
And the reason is that I'll handle everything, but I won't handle centipedes. They, they can't be trained. So, so you'll pick up the world's deadliest snake, but not a centipede? No, wow. I won't. Well, it seems that everyone has their limits. Stuart's healthy respect for centipedes is only eclipsed by his admiration and love of the tarantula. Stuart claims these hairy-legged arachnids are at the forefront of groundbreaking medical research. It all starts with the delicate art of milking, a demonstration you can see here every day. Now, these fangs are actually as large as most Australian land snakes. And as you can imagine, incredibly uh, painful. Now I'm just going to give it a mild electrical shock. And there's the venom. It might not look like very much, but it's actually enough to make a room full of people very ill. Ironically, that small drop of venom could also quite possibly save many people. The venom from centipedes has been used to develop medicines for arthritis sufferers. And there is currently research being done on scorpion venom and how it might be used in treating brain cancer. Tim has flown up to the Northern Territory to visit Milton Jones on his huge cattle station between Darwin and the West Australia border. It's a rugged landscape teeming with wildlife. There's a big saltwater croc. First stop is Milton's favourite fishing spot. Might put this fella on the barbies. Good tucker. But while Tim has been bragging about his barramundi, Milton is focusing on much bigger prey. We've got a problem crocodile that's posing a danger to cattle. He's in the big river. We're just getting some traps now to try and catch him and relocate. As humans spread and settle further and further into croc country, attacks on people and livestock are becoming more common. Try and jump on him a bit. First, they need to assemble the traps. You hold him up, I'll get on him. Bait goes in one end, slides open, croc comes in, grabs the bait, which is donkey leg today, trap shuts. Jump in there and put your rope up that end again now. You pulled it out too much. Milton has been trapping crocs for about 20 years. That's it. Beautiful. He's off to set this one near to where the problem croc was last seen. Living in close proximity to Australia's deadliest predator has taught Milton to treat crocs with a lot of respect. You just need to get a visual on the crocodile and never underestimate where they can be because I've seen a 16-foot crocodile in a hole about as big as his head. Yeah. You had any close calls yourself? Yeah, I have, yeah, for sure. Well, the biggest thing is chasing these fellas, barramundi. They yeah. get out there bloody waist-deep in water, casting for a fish and... You know, that's how, they, uh, that's how a lot of them get taken. Yeah. Later in the show, we find out whether Tim and Milton's rogue croc will take the bait. In northern Thailand, about an hour's drive from Chiang Mai, lies this magical spot in Lampang. It's the world's very first elephant hospital a pioneering medical sanctuary for nature's gentle giants. More than 2,000 injured and seriously ill patients have been treated here since 1994. 11-month-old Mucha is just one of the incredible stories of survival. What does that mean? Is that just she's, a sneeze? Yes. She's, <laughs> Yeah, she wants more banana. Oh, I'm too slow, am I? I'm too slow. I'm so you sorry, Mucha. Uh... There you go. A landmine shattered the baby's leg when she was following her mother. Mum was being used for illegal logging in Burma, just across the Thai border. 
Today, the cheeky moocher is showing us just how well she's coping. <laughs> but if this baby didn't make you smile so much, her terrible injury would break your heart. It's sad to see that the symbol of the country is disappearing before our eyes in my own lifetime. The dynamo behind this extraordinary refuge is Sereda Sawala. That soft voice and gentle manner belie an iron-willed crusader. There are only two and a half thousand elephants now in captivity in Thailand. Only two thousand left in the wild. The most famous patient is the beautiful Matola. Her medical story has made her the most famous elephant in the world. And you know it, don't you, girl? You're just gorgeous. Matola's tragedy made headlines around the world. Another innocent victim of illegal logging, her lower left leg had been blown off by a landmine in the forest. The 38-year-old elephant was close to death, in terrible pain. And I touch her cheek. How are you, dear? And we are trying to help you. Be patient, she cried. Leading vets and orthopedic surgeons rushed to the primitive operating theater. After the operation, she failed to gain consciousness, and Sereda thought they were losing her. Then she fluttered her eyelids. She has the most beautiful eyes I've yes, ever seen. she does. Each morning, Matola wanders out to her favorite sand pit and maneuvers herself down onto the soft bed. It is blissful relief. Despite the ongoing antibiotics and herbal treatments, it has been a frustrating battle to heal the wounds. She is happy though, even though she has some pains. After she pulled through the operation, a leading prosthetics expert took on the challenge of designing an artificial leg for Matola. This is the pre-prosthetic, a lightweight canvas shoe filled with sawdust. The shoe helps with stretching her muscles. With everything that's happened to her, how gentle has she been? She's been very gentle. Never hits anyone, never kicks anyone. Matola is a silent but damning indictment of the cruelty to elephants. My right knee. But the miracle of Matola gives Sereda the strength to keep fighting. But the moment I, I knew her, until now, she has never lost the courage to fight. And she has no doubt at all that um, we are trying to help her, not only me. And thanks to all. Yep, it's that busy time of the morning at Hillsville Sanctuary. So who have we got in here? We're going to meet a couple of our babies in here this morning. Come on, out you come, quick. Keeper Jocelyn Hockley is dishing out some much-needed TLC to some special little charges. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Just hold it for him and he'll take it. Like many of the animals that end up at the sanctuary, this very fellow has a lot of adjusting to do. So Dylan's probably about 14, 15 months old now. And how long have you had him here? He's been here a couple of months now. Unfortunately, Dylan was run over by a motorbike and he broke his arm. So he had to come here with us and we've had to put a pin in this little arm here to help the bone heal. Right. And he's doing really well. Oh, what's going on there? He's taking the lid off the bottle. There you go. <laughs> it's just like having human babies. Yeah. OK, Ella, now it's your turn. Come on. Next, Jocelyn has another hungry mouth to feed. Ella is an orphaned koala 
and she just melts your heart. She's just snuggling in like a little bubble. When Ella first came in, her mother had been hit by a car and she had severe head trauma. She wouldn't drink from a bottle like koalas normally would. Oh, she looks so cute. Ella's fur is incredibly soft. Nikki would love to have a cuddle, but sanctuary policy says staff only. So do you get quite attached? To them. Oh, obviously you do. You're spending so much of your time with these little guys that you can't help but get attached to them. And this might look like play, but a bit of rough and tumble is a vital part of rehabilitation. As a baby, she would be playing with mum, but it's also an opportunity to give little Ella a bit of a health check. Jocelyn can check out her eyes and ears and make sure her feet are OK. Up to 2,000 stray, neglected or injured animals come into the sanctuary every year. Sadly, their stay often begins here on the operating table at the new state-of-the-art hospital. If he hadn't been brought in, this poor little fella would definitely have died. Probably about 70% of the cases we see are as a result of road trauma. Okay. Not only would he be unable to fly and catch food, he would have been easy prey for other animals. Hopefully, a pin will help mend his badly broken wing and he can be released back into the wild. Yeah. Wes was rescued around six months ago. He was sore and sorry after being found on a football oval. Though he has got a couple of toes missing, if he's going to keep still for me. Um, oh, as you can wow. see just here. Oh, Lord, look over there. Wes has certainly landed on his battle-scarred little feet. He's now part of the permanent collection at Healesville, and Kelly, his keeper, says he'll probably live to the ripe old age of around 50. So, Jocelyn, who have we brought home today? This is little Andy. Andy's a little baby brush tail possum. Oh, look. Andy was found by a staff member, somehow separated from her mum, and too young to care for herself. She's on four hourly feeds at the moment, so she obviously needs to come home with someone so she can have those feeds through the night. It certainly takes special devotion to be a foster mum and a courageous heart yeah. when it's time to say goodbye. Jocelyn comforts herself with the thought that these animals come in from the wild and that's where they truly belong. Tim has been helping set traps to catch a rogue saltwater crocodile in the Northern Territory. Overnight, there's been an exciting development. We're going to get down the river. There's been a croc spotted down there, good size. It's right near one of the traps we set, so it could be our croc. Tim's colleague Scott will be trying to track it by boat, while Tim hitches a ride in the helicopter. Looks like a croc has taken the bait. Scotty, are you there, mate? Yeah, go ahead. We've got a croc in a trap, mate. I don't know if it's the one we were after, but it's a good size. You're right to come give me a hand. I'll be there shortly. Have a look at this. Ah, oh, it's a big croc. There's no doubt about it. That crocodile could take down a small cow and certainly a person. Wow. We need to move the croc. This hole here, no access either way to the river, it's just a hole and the cows are coming down every day, so there's a good spot up river we could drop him. Let's get to it. Yep. Mouth open there, watch your fingers. We're gonna put this noose over his nose, tighten him up and bring him out. Hey, settle down, mate, settle down. Okay, he's in a good spot there, jaws open. Bit of that wire there, please, Scotty. He's making a big bellow, a rumble, and it's travelling right up and through me, and I tell you what, it's scary. Let's get him out of there. You've got to get the rope securely around his top jaw. Lose concentration for a second, and you could very quickly become a casualty. Get that through, Scotty. Can you take that rope through? Their brave pilot, Steve, is watching all the action from a safe distance. Look at that croc. She's just intimidating when there's no bars. 
Ready? Just watch it. Yep, let's go. Come on, mate. I'm gonna jump on. Keep that pressure on, boys. What a crock. Cross them up. Feels good when that mouth's shut. Look at that hand. It's as big as mine. Just an awesome creature. Crocodiles have a four-chambered heart. They can shut down two of those chambers at any time. That's really unique. They're the only animal on Earth that can do that. When they're hibernating or laying still on the bottom of a river, they only pump blood to the major organs, like the brain and the lungs. There's no need to pump it to the limbs. They can stay submerged for up to an hour. Right, mate. We're just going to put a blindfold on. When she's in the dark, can't see, she'll feel safer and won't stress. Right, up. let's get her up. It's time to go for a ride. Head at the back, boys. Head at the back. <sighs> Hope she's getting frequent flyer points. Not every day you see a flying crocodile. Time for us to fly now. See you next time on Danger Wild Animals. <laughs>